Hello there, Taurus. When I was shuffling out this spread, um, I saw an image, and it's kind of like a, a movie, actually. So the, the images were moving. And it was a little bit bizarre because it seems like it's a modern day film. It's not like a silent film, but I'm not seeing any, I'm, I'm not able to pick up any noise, any uh, conversation in that movie reel. Okay, so I see a couple, a man and a woman. They seem like, you know, they're a couple. They're in their kitchen. And the woman is talking about, you know, the, the dishwasher. Cause she keeps pointing at it like something wrong there's something wrong with it there's like um soap or or like uh, foam coming out of it meaning it's broken right it's leaking and then the man he's just kind of waving it off like disregarding what she's saying and he's all like let's talk about the stove so he has his hand on the range on the cooking stove and it seems like there might be faulty electrical uh, wiring with the stove and so he's more concerned about that. He's more concerned about the, you know, the fire hazard, whereas she's more concerned about the flooding. And so I feel like they're in the midst of a very, very important conversation. I can't make out the substance of their conversation, but I don't think it really matters. It basically means you and another person might be arguing over technicalities, over differences, over perceptions of things or over the importance of two different things and you might not be able to see eye to eye on a situation or you might not be able to understand how I guess like how urgent a problem is for another person and they vice versa cannot fathom how important or how urgent something else is to you so I definitely feel a situation where two people are kind of like talking over one another and it's it seems like it's very counterproductive because they're not on the same wavelength and they're not communicating in a way that will get through to one another and I also see a situation that could potentially be a little bit stressful. You might have a lot of stressor in your life. The other person might also likewise have a lot of stressor in their life. And so their sense of urgency bringing a matter to you, you just feel like they're overreacting. And then you likewise, you're bringing something to their attention. And in their world, based on all the stressors that they're dealing with, those things that you're bringing up might not seem very dire or urgent to them. So I definitely feel here we need to kind of um, listen to one another and really understand where the other person is coming from because I feel like, you know, the conversation is in the kitchen. They're talking very excitedly and I feel like it's escalating, okay? If not for the month of October, I feel like this is like unresolved issues because you're not really dis discussing the same things. These issues can come up later down the line and it might escalate. It might be, you know, a little bit more heated. So whatever damage control you can do, whatever preventative measures you can take in order to de-escalate the situation. Um, I feel like it would be pertinent to take care of that in the month of October. And another thing, since I'm not able to hear anything that they're talking about, I also feel as if you're not really hearing each other, okay? There's this like, it's, it's almost like a deafening silence, a deafening silence. And it's, it's really strange because, you know, that's kind of like an oxymoron, right? How could silence be deafening? Um, I feel like a lot of the times, a lot of our conversation and our interaction with another person, uh, what is not said is also as powerful as what is said. So for example, you know, if you're like pouring your heart out to another person and in, in like a text message and all you get is a silence, nothing, no feedback, no follow-up messages, all you get is crickets. It says a lot, right? It says a lot. And so I feel like the theme here is about, you know, the deafening silence. 
it could be an uncomfortable silence or it could be a situation where there's a lot of noise but there's no substantive um, you know c uh, conversation or communication that's coming through and so like all the noise might as well just have been silence because nothing meaningful is being communicated so I would urge you if you're in a situation where you're dealing with another person like this do the preliminary you know take the, the preventative measures to make sure that this situation doesn't get dragged on past October because I feel like there's something very cyclical here that's coming back around so um, the reason I say cyclical as well is we have here the world and this is a fixed sign card okay this is something that's like very very much set in stone the four corners of it indicates like the the, the zodiac signs but um the fixed signs are Aquarius, Gemini, I'm sorry, not Gemini, Aquarius, Leo, Scorpio, and Taurus, which is you. You're one of the corners, you're one of the pillars of the fixed energy, and fixed signs are incredibly, incredibly, incredibly stubborn. You know yourself well, right? Some of you might be dealing with another fixed sign where the, the, uh, the word fixed keeps coming up, and that's why I'm mentioning it, because like, like I said, the woman is fixated on the, the, the dishwasher that's foaming and leaking. And the man is fixated on this uh, oven range that has electrical issues. And so a lot of the times, um, you know, being a fixed sign is great. We're very dependable. When we say we're going to do something, we're going to do it. If we say we're going to meet somebody at a certain time, no matter how sick we are that morning, God forbid, we still make it, okay? So we still make it there to meet them because that's the nature of a fixed sign. We don't make promises lightly and we don't break our promises, okay? And so there's virtue in being a fixed sign. But on the flip side of that, it can bring about rigidity where we are so fixated on a specific idea, a way of thinking, um, you know, wanting to control certain outcomes too, I feel coming up uh, in, in the, the fixed energy, wanting a specific outcome. So for example, if you wake up in the morning, right, and you've already kind of figured out in your head how the day is going to play out. And then if something kind of, if one of your plans kind of deviates from whatever it is that you've already imagined the day to be, it can be a little bit it can throw you for a loop and it can be a, a lot more difficult for you to adapt to these adapt to these changes okay so I, I feel like there's a an, an energy here about being a little bit too fixed being too fixated on something that might in the overall scheme of things might not be very important but in your mind in that moment because you're already caught up in the whirlwind of it it seems important to you and so try to avert your gaze try to be a little bit more flexible try to you know really see things from another person's point of view because once again with this fixed energy with the world she's encapsulated in this bubble okay that's her world this is her entire world everybody else is on the outside of it so she's not able to see things so much from the other person's perspective so i feel like you might be doing this or you might be dealing with another person that you feel encapsulates this energy where the two of you are not able to see things from an outsider's perspective because the world view is a little bit too closed off and a little bit too narrow okay so i feel like the energy might be a little bit stressful for this month of um october and Okay, so first of all, what I'm seeing here is you're dealing with somebody, I feel like there's a lot of love here, okay? There's a lot of deep, deep emotions, and, and you know, this is what runs deep. And honestly, if the emotions were not there, if you didn't care about the other person, they wouldn't matter to you, right? Fixed signs are very, very clear about who matters to them and who really do doesn't matter. So fixed signs have like a small circle, right? You could be a Leo too, but you still have this small circle. These are the people that you hold very, very dear to your heart. And then everybody else, you might care about them, but they don't have that weight, okay? They're not in that inner circle, in that inner sanctum. They're not um, privy to your ideas, your plans, your deepest, darkest secrets, okay? So I feel like that's just the nature of being a fixed sign. 
And so I feel like there's a situation here, you're dealing with somebody where there is a lot of love, there's a lot of caring, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of mutual respect, I'm sensing, a lot of trust. And because of that, you, you kind of, you know, you, you put up with the situation, even though it's tenuous. But I feel like there is a person in your midst, somebody who's very generous, who's very, very kind. Deep down, they're very generous. I have here the Queen of Cups. This is someone who's got a very soft energy, okay? Very loving, very caring. They would like give the shirt off their back for another person. They care about humanity as a whole. They care about everybody. They care about the homeless man that, you know, they pass by every day. They care about their, their kids. So like they're, the way that they care and the way that they love, it can be a little bit depersonalized, but it's, it's very universal. Okay, they, they want like what's best for everybody. But I also feel as if there's a sense of protection associated with this person. They're naked and vulnerable, like the woman in the picture. But she's got that, you know, shield uh, bubble wrap around her where she's not able to let her feelings shown. So I feel like this is somebody who does not like to be taken advantage of. They might have been taken advantage of in the past and over time they've developed thick skin, you know. Um, over time, they learn not to be naive. They learn not to let the wrong people in. They learn to kind of wall up or build up those walls around themselves. And then as a result of it, I just feel like, you know, the love runs deep and is definitely there. But it might show up, like it, it requires a lot of digging, a lot of unearthing in order to get to the essence you know, and get to that tenderness within that person, okay? There's a situation here where I feel like, you know, crying over spilled milk, too much has been said. I also feel like somebody's protection, like the, the, the walls that they resurrect in order to protect them from, from harm, from being taken advantage of, from, from trusting other people, from getting close to other people, it's um, having like an adverse effect unintended side effect is is driving people away okay I'm seeing this situation it could be you or it could be the people that you're dealing with I honestly read it both ways I feel like there's a person here that um, might be you know they're they're so protective of their heart and their feelings they're driving other people away you know you, you see these people walking away and then I'm also sensing as well, like, um, you know, self-sabotage, okay? Sabotaging a good thing by injecting, like, negativity into it. And what I mean is we all have the tendency to do this, but I feel like earth signs tend to do it a little bit more, mainly because you earth signs, you're very hard on yourself. You expect a lot more from yourself. You're very perfectionistic. And I feel like, you know, this is a situation where, you know, it has the potential but for whatever reason, somebody is just like, oh, it's never going to happen for me. Or, you know, oh, it's never going to be exactly the way that I want. And so in the process of like thinking in a negative way, I feel like it creates a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I also feel like somebody who's very, very closed off. And then as a result of being closed off, they're driving people away. It's hard for people to be easy um, around them to feel at ease around them, excuse me. And it's also hard for them to, you know, connect emotionally to other people. So I feel like somebody was given like multiple chances, you know, let's do this, let's do that, let's not disappoint me, let's just, you know, pick up where we left off and things like that. And I feel like somebody was so guarded and, per over and just like overprotective of their emotions that they, they might have inadvertently like let, you know, really good people walk away because they're not able to be open and vulnerable. I have as well the Seven of Swords, and the Seven of Swords usually denotes a uh, situation where I feel like there might have been trust issues, okay? And once again, the whole theme here is about not letting our guard down, not being able to trust somebody fully, and you know, uh, when it comes to being a fixed sign, I understand, you know, that it's also very, very hard. Like you. Fixed signs have had um, usually a very, very rough situation in life early on in their childhood where they've had to grow really, really fast. They've had to grow up really fast. 
And so they've had to learn to be self-sufficient at a very young age. They've had a lot of responsibilities uh, imposed upon them. And I also feel like there's a lot of guilt associated with you guys, where I'm I'm sensing like um, if you if you promise somebody that you're going to do something, and for whatever reason, you know, outside of your control, you can't deliver. You beat yourself up over it. Okay, instead of um, giving yourself a break kind of like the Pisces, they're very much into giving themselves a break. Instead of taking that energy and just be like, you know what, I'm new at this and all of these other external things happen outside of my control, so I really shouldn't blame myself. But you do, you, you wallow in it and you blame yourself. You're just like, if I were better, or if I'd done things differently, if I timed it right, you, you beat yourself over it. You internalize that energy. And then I feel like it gets to the point where you just feel like you might not be good enough, okay? And so, once again, the Seven of Swords trust issue here. Because you expect so much of yourself, you also expect a lot of other people. And when people, for whatever reason, when they give themselves a break, when they cut themselves some slack, when they, you know, for whatever reason, make promises and then they can't deliver, you automatically think that like, oh, they didn't try hard enough, right? They didn't try hard enough because if I tried, I always succeed and I always, you know, uh, pull my weight or I always, you know, a man or a woman of my word. The other person, they didn't try enough, hard enough. If it meant a lot to them, they would have tried. And so I feel like, you know, somebody might be giving you a reason as to why they couldn't do what they said or as to how some things unfolded. And instead of taking them at face value and just be and, and just, you know, kind of like say, oh, those are acceptable reasons. I feel like you're a little bit sulky and you're kind of like, well, if they really meant to do it, they should have tried harder. And so a lot of the times we need to be very, very careful about, you know, being so hard on ourselves and setting impossible goals and, and just sort of like ideals for ourselves, but then also externalizing that energy and being equally hard on other people. So we can't really bring our hang-ups into relationships, right? And this is like all kinds of relationship, but I do feel there is a, a big element here about deep-rooted love, okay? Like somebody that you, um, you really care for. And I feel like there's a situation here where you just felt like if they tried harder okay and and so it's like having it's like unfairly imposing uh, really high expectations on another person and I feel as if that might not be fair okay but either way if you are dealing with the situation there is an opportunity here for reconciliation for coming together for getting an opportunity to explain yourself and I feel almost like I hope you guys are watching this in the month of September because I feel like it might it might address some of these issues that you might not have aired out in the open, okay? And these things that you might know about yourself, but you've never really talked about it. You've never really expressed it. You've never really uh, delved deeper into exploring these things, okay? So that's what I'm sensing here. And so just know that whoever you're dealing with okay there is a there's a softness about them but they have a, a, a thick outer shell and then I'm also sensing you know there's a generosity about them okay this is somebody who like when the going gets rough they're still gonna be there they're still gonna be skeptical they're still going to you know that, that balancing scale here is about fairness it's about justice it's about, you know, rationality versus emotions. I feel like you're with somebody who makes very, very solid, rational decisions. They're, they're, they're very kind, but they're not swayed by an emotional, you know, appeal, okay? So they still need to kind of like sort out the facts, sort out the tangible, practical responsibilities, or even the facts that they can hear, taste, smell, touch before they act okay so i feel like no matter what they're very kind they are fair they are fair 
And then I'm also sensing as well if there has been some type of a stall communication. We have here the Page of Swords, and with this energy, I'm just feeling like somebody's trying to reach out. Somebody's clearly, you know, holding emotions, trying to reach out, trying to, you know, reconnect in an emotional way. And this person's got their sword up, right? It's like lack of response, lack of communication. Lack of uh, ability to explain a situation. I'm also sensing as well with this card, it's about, you know, truths coming to light. Realizing the gravity of the situation. Realizing who's no longer in the picture. Realizing who's no longer around. And then realizing as well that, you know, those cups cannot be refilled. And so there's a situation here where you might feel the beginning of October as if there's an impasse. There's silence. There's a lack of a, a response. Okay, and a lot of the times, like I said, when the, the the silence can be very deafening. It can be felt in a very um, eerie. I want to say, like in a gut punching your gut type of a way because it's powerful. Okay, so what is not said in the month of October actually carries more weight actually you know evokes more of an emotional response than what is said what is said could very well be just you know background noise white noise because it doesn't really mean anything but that silence i feel like carries a lot of weight in the month of october at least okay so initially, there might be a situation where I feel like there's an impasse, there's lack of communication, there's like blockages when it comes to communication. And I feel like it worries somebody, okay? The lack of communication, the lack of reciprocity. It can feel very isolating, okay? Like that, um, that daunting, huge mountain that somebody has to overcome. And the word that I'm getting with this card, when I shuffled it out, was, um, it, it, it's like, it's a situation where because of the silence, because of lack of information, we tend to project, right? We tend to think about worst case scenarios. And um, I know it's funny, but um, I was thinking about this. And uh, I was just thinking that, you know how sometimes you're seeing somebody new? Or your friend is and your friend who's like you know very sweet and cute and just innocent and um, you know he or she let's just say she okay because I, I've seen it happen and she texts a new person that you know she's dating and she's like oh do you want to grab coffee or do you want to meet me for lunch or whatever and the other person doesn't respond and then she's thinking like you know rather than thinking you know rationally he's busy or you know he's at work right now he'll probably respond to me in a few hours or you know maybe he's not that into me she's probably thinking like oh he's not respond to me he's not responding to me because you know he's got in a maybe in a very terrible car accident for example and so we let our imagination run wild, okay? We, we kind of like need to rein those um, wild thoughts in, mainly because I feel like it's a, it's a daunting, daunting situation. You're not really sure what you can do. And um, funnily enough, this is a, the same energy I was picking up for, um, for Capricorns, but Capricorns have been dealing with this energy, you know, for the past two years because they have their Saturn transit. And so I feel like they're the master right now. Capricorns are in a really, really good place because they're the master of letting go. They're the master of starting over. Okay, they've already learned their karmic lessons. I feel for you guys, it's possibly touching you guys right now where you are starting to understand how your emotional responses or how your emotional ways of doing, of coping, might create a rift or a barrier between you and another person. And how we kind of have to, you know, let those walls come down, okay? Uh, it, it's almost like that mountain, that, that cliff, that emotional rift between you and another person. Because, you know, the Four of Pentacles is the miser. 
he clings on to his financial resources, but also he's very self-protective. He doesn't want to get hurt. He doesn't want to feel naked and vulnerable without protection. He wants, you know, to 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 cling on to things for for strength, for protection, for you know whatever life throws at him. For a rainy day, he saves up for a rainy day. He can tend to hoard a little bit, and so there is a situation here where there, I feel like there's an a, an emotional rift between you and another person, and um, I feel like there might be lack of communication. And you know, once again, this reading goes vice versa. Okay. In terms of your advice here, there is going to be a situation where there is a coming back together. And it's going to happen very, very, very fast. You might feel that it's very slow because with this pentacle suit, things are built over time. But I feel like with this Knight of Swords energy, it's happening very, very swiftly and very quickly. And so there might be like a standstill, a stalemate or like lack of communication for, you know, what feels like a really long time. But then when the, the gates, the floodgates open, it opens really, really fast and there will be, you know, a lot more explanation. And so what I do feel, this is kind of like my card for the stranger at your doorstep, okay? It's like somebody coming in and wanting to communicate, wanting to speak. They might come to your office, they might come to your house if it's a co-worker. Um, if it's a coworker, they might come to your office. If it's like a significant other or somebody that you have that emotional connection with, they're coming to your house. They're, it's it's like physical, um, like a physical manifestation of a person. They're coming in with that visitation, and there's an opportunity to talk face to face. If in the past communication has been, you know, electronic, and especially we are in a digital age, and a lot of things taken out of context in a text message or in an email or in a, um, you know, messaging thing, it can be misconstrued because we're not really uh, hearing the tone and we're not seeing the face, you know, the, the emotions and the, the body language and the facial expressions and the micro expressions associated with that communication and things might get misconstrued but I feel like there's a situation here where you have a way to see the other person face to face and really discuss and really you know spend the time and spend the energy to really hash things out okay so I definitely feel uh, um, a breaking open of that floodgate and communication starts to flow again I'm also sensing as well with this card. This is the hangman. We're seeing it from, you know, from a different perspective. And the words that I'm getting when I shuffled out this card was there's something on your mind and you feel by acting on it or by saying it or by, you know, um, speaking it out loud. You feel like there might be judgment, there might be censorship, so you kind of held it in, okay? You don't want to go against the crowd, you don't want to, you know, be provocative. You don't want to be in this situation where you're kind of like burned at the stake. It's like saying something and then having the masses disagree with you and all of a sudden we feel censored or we feel like the odd man out or we feel like we're not really fitting in. So there's a situation here that is calling for going out on a limb, okay? It can feel very uncomfortable because this is a very vulnerable situation, okay? And whatever it is that you're dealing with for this month, you have to learn to be vulnerable in the right context because I feel like, first of all, the beginning of the month, you're shying away from it. You still have your protective bubble up. And then, you know, the, the feelings get repressed, just pressed down. And then this is like being burned at the stake. You know, this is a very uncomfortable situation. You're exposed, you're vulnerable, you're strapped up, you're tied in. And I feel like there's an audience even. So it's a situation that's really telling you, you know, you either can go out on a limb here or you can wait until the end of the month and you can go out on a limb here. It's going to be a little bit more uncomfortable. And once you do that, however, you're going to start to realize that whoever you're dealing with you're in a place of safety with them there's no judgment here this is like trust and stability that has been uh, built up over a very long period of time okay 
It doesn't happen overnight. It's like you know the the duration of a relationship, a friendship, of knowing somebody. Uh, it's give and take. It's built up over time, and it requires a lot of like、um, a, a lot of like experiences that can make the situation. So you're gonna realize that you're in very very good hands. That whoever you're dealing with, they're not judging you. They know who you are. They've been around the block with you. They've been through hell and back with you, and so they're not going to, you know, cast judgment upon you. They're not going to shut you down when you're ready to be open and vulnerable with them. They're going to open up their door. They're going to open up this archway. They're going to let you in, and you know, not just have a conversation like a、um, what? What is that word? Like a、uh, superficial conversation in the law, in the、uh, doorway, or in the hallway, or you know, in 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 the on the porch, they're gonna invite you into the fold so that you can have a proper conversation. Okay, pour you some tea, make you some coffee, so that it, it's almost like we're gonna sit here and drink coffee and drink tea until we hash this out, because this has been you know、um, a long time coming. And so I feel like there's a situation here where there is closure, there is reconciliation, and you're gonna realize that you know all your fears about opening up, being vulnerable, they were unfounded because you know it, it, we bring all of our hangups into relationships, and it's really important to address them when we're an individual rather than bringing that into. A relationship with another person, so I feel like you're gonna realize there might have been some things, some conditionings, some ways of doing, some patterns, some habits that might not con- be conducive to you know creating a harmonious、uh, relationship. And it could be work, it could be with a significant other, but I definitely feel the walls are closing down or are coming down, which is great. And you're gonna realize you're in a space of safety, okay? And so, I see fast and swift communication. It's gonna get heated, but I feel like it needs to be hashed out. And I feel like there will be situation where you know somebody wants a lot more of your attention, a lot more of your time. They're very,、um, they're gonna make it very clear. Okay, so this is a card about cutting through the riffraff, cutting through the confusion. This is somebody who comes in. Very, very, very fast. No nonsense.、Uh, fixed signs are very no nonsense. Okay, it's almost like you guys operate with an agenda. You kind of have checklists. Okay, because you know, once again, you're very perfectionistic. You're hard on yourself. You want to get as many things done as you have promised or as you are capable of. And so you're dealing with someone who's just like-minded, who's just you know very like type A,、uh, checklist oriented. You know. Um, coming in with an agenda. Let's talk about all of these things. Let's splice through the confusion. Let's be very, very clear. Let's not talk out of the other side of our mouth, and let's just, you know, be on the same page. Okay? They're wanting to be on the same page. They've wanted this communication for quite some time. And at the end of the day, it's going to be, you know, a truce. Okay? Give and take, an equal exchange. No one is、uh, talking while the other person is forced to listen. It's going to be an equal give and take, and an equal opportunity for like you know, back and forth type of communication to really hash some things out. Okay.、Um, aside from that, I, I feel like there's a, a situation here that needs to be fixed, and I feel that you need to let your walls down. And then I'm also sensing as if.、Um, You know the the first half of the month. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like it's a little bit uncomfortable, and then the second half is where you know things the the floodgate starts to open. Things are gonna flow again, and you're gonna have you're gonna have you're not going to feel like you're beating yourself、um, up you know against a brick wall where things aren't moving, where things are are stagnant. Things are gonna start moving. Okay, let me see if there is anything else for you. I took some notes earlier when I was shuffling out the cards. Um, with this card, I'm seeing here. You know, all my cards are on the table. Okay, revelation. It's like I'll show you mine, you show me yours, and I feel like all those pentacles. It it just denotes to me like our cards are on the table. 
So whoever it is that's coming to your doorstep, I feel like they're saying, here, listen, let, let's talk, okay? And then I'm seeing this is an aggressive but a really good person. This is somebody that, you know, deserves the time of day and the benefit of the doubt, okay? I'm going to leave it at that. I hope that um, this reading is helpful for you. For those who are watching this in the month of September, I especially hope that this resonates in some type of a situation that you're in so that you can have a little bit more closure and clarity because I feel like there's a lot of love here. There's a lot of deep emotions and I feel like um, when the emotions are there, we can, you know, get bogged down with, um, when we know somebody for a really long time too, we can also get a lot, bogged down with a lot of mixed emotions. But um it's worth salvaging okay it's worth going out on a limb for it's worth letting your guard down it's worth communicating it's worth you know putting all your cards on the table because you're dealing with someone who is willing to work at it all right i will leave it at that taurus um once again i'm no longer doing reading so if you're interested in a reading i have included a link to my colleague her name is bridget the link to her scheduling website is in the description box below. She is very phenomenal. She's a psychic, and um, I can't recommend her enough. If you haven't uh, gotten a reading from her, I highly recommend it. And um, I will see you guys in the month of November, and I hope everything clears up by then, okay? I hope this is helpful. Take care of yourself, and I'll talk to you guys soon. And have a wonderful rest of September as well. Bye-bye.